good good evening viewers uh, i welcome you all for this talk on energy audits i would like to take the opportunity to thank professor yadav president ishray kolapur sangli sub chapter uh, professor sadar sheikh hd mechanical and uh, mr anirban student leader for ishray for giving me this opportunity so this talk exclusively i'll uh, dedicate for energy audits in general and tomorrow i'll be specifically speaking on hvac that is heating ventilation and air conditioning so i am suresh mane working at girija by sale institute of technology which is at karwar south of goa so the flow will be something like this we'll study what what where and why energy audits what are the types of energy audits the steps undertaken then the instruments used for energy audits both mechanical as well as electrical we'll see the report how it is prepared energy audit report like you make your own project reports so one report has to be prepared then uh, i think mep training uh, you had a beautiful talk on 12th so just briefly i'll be one slide i got on mep training some energy efficient technologies both mechanical and electrical will discuss because i think this will be some take away so that you understand the new technologies and uh, i'll also talk about the be star labeling program uh, may, some of you may be aware but let us uh, revisit that specifically with respect to dg sets that is diesel generating sets i will also look into the home energy conservation i have taken some snaps from my own home like uh, what we do to save energy in our at homes and i'll have a small calculation of our home also how much we spend so per capita expenditure on energy we'll understand and we'll see the hvac some terms a psychometry chart if and uh, so vfd is one good uh, device uh, extensively used for energy conservation that we will see on small graph we will see and some measures on energy uh, conservation in the cold storage as well as uh, we'll see the national competitive examination for energy manager and audit energy auditor conducted by uh, government of india that is ministry of power and lastly the references so what is an energy audit i think we all do audits but it is not recorded or not very formal informally we do so energy audit is nothing but the inspection survey and the analysis of energy flows for identification of energy saving opportunities to reduce the energy inputs without affecting the output so ultimately we are trying to find out the identification of energy saving opportunities now uh, this opportunities can be at home can be in industries okay and we all do financial audits you know which, uh, there are char uh, ch chartered accountants for organizations and institutes the ca will be taking energy audit likewise for energy audit to be an energy auditor you should be a graduate engineer and that we shall see and uh, we will also study the means uh, as a auditor you study the input uh, output process of a industry and what is the technology used and what is the energy cost involved in the industry so energy in audit basically deals with checking uh, we check we measure and verify you have to uh, measure it because uh, in at real life uh, we don't measure at home and all but in industry you need to measure and verify and you need to compare with the benchmarks we have our own benchmarks i think you are all aware uh, uh, that uh, if you want to buy a bike or car first thing you ask how kitna dete hai so this is one of the benchmark we keep similarly uh, there are constraints with money so audit plays a more vital role for industries to be sustainable in this difficult time so why energy audits means there is a resource crunch you are aware world is going through a recession and india is no exception to that many manufacturing industry is very badly hit automobile sector is hurt so a lot of uh, sectors are hit basically education also is going through a recession and uh, secondly the fa fossil fuels whatever we are using are very finite in nature i think you are all aware that uh, we are extensively dependent on fossil fuels india is almost importing 7.5 lakh crores worth of oil crude oil that is almost to tell 2054 crore rupees per day of oil import we are doing just imagine the foreign exchange being uh, burnt by our uh, transport vehicles mainly and third we have got the environmental concerns like uh, you are all aware uh, 
about the concerns. Let us see. Now the key environmental issues are like the acid rain, ozone layer depletion, global warming and the loss of biodiversity. This slide depicts the acid rain basically. You can see at the bottom of the red car and uh, the industry is there. So these emit uh, SO2, NOx and all, which these gases go and react with the uh, water vapor in the clouds and they form nitric acid as well as sulfuric acid and which fall back. And it hurts everything like it hurts buildings, it hurts mankind, it hurts vegetation. So this is not advisable and I think you are aware of Taj Mahal even the color disfiguration started and Supreme Court asked the industries to move out of Agra. And second is the ozone layer depletion. I think you are aware due to the COVID at least one good thing has happened is the ozone layer has healed. So ozone is a shield which protects mankind from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun. And that gets destroyed by the chlorine and other CFC which use refrigerants. So nowadays we are going for ozone friendly refrigerants. Third is the natural greenhouse effect actually uh, the temperature of the earth is rising. So this also having disastrous uh, uh, consequences and it will be a global consequences uh, uh, which the mankind is likely to face in near future. And the CO2 levels if you see earlier somewhere around 290-300 was the average uh, uh, CO2 level in the atmosphere. Today it is hovering somewhere on 390. Very dangerous levels of uh, carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. And uh, it is really not a good trend. Uh, this trend has to be reversed. And action is being taken at all levels, international level, national level. And few organizations in India like uh, which are taking care of this uh, energy conservation is at PCRA. That is Petroleum Conservation Research Association. Then BE, that is Bureau of Energy Efficiency under Ministry of Power. And you have got uh, Ministry of MNRE, Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. So basically, we all say that electricity is a very clean uh, uh, power which we use uh, at the point of use. But at uh, the point of generation, it produces a lot of uh, smoke. I don't know whether you have visited any... Uh, thermal power plant. I am fortunate that I have visited both thermal power plant, nuclear power plant as well as hydel power plants. But I have seen that thermal power plant lot emit a lot of smoke, a lot of fly ash. Uh, so that is what I wanted to suggest that the power what we use not only in India as well as the world, almost 60 percent of the power comes through coal. And this has got very uh, uh, disastrous consequences. So the energy audit is more so important because Coal emits a lot of carbon dioxide. And regarding the finite nature of the fossil fuels, if you see this graph, very simple graph it is there, right from 100,000 BC to 4000 BC. Somewhere around 1900 and all we got that uh, uh, crude oil and all. And within a span of I think 50, 100 years, the entire thing gets exhausted. But so we are the only generation we are enjoying this. I am very sure that uh, the next generations, the other generations to come, they will not enjoy the benefit of this fuel. So this is simple graph tipping that. And the energy audit basically when we look into industries, so we see that uh, like this uh, industrial process shown in the center. So in the left you see the energy, water, chemicals, raw material, they are uh, the inputs. <coughs> and you get the products at the right. And in this process you have like emissions uh, from combustion, emissions from the process. And in the bottom you can see the waste, the solid waste and indirect uh, energy waste. So we study the input and output of the process in any industry. Okay. So uh, uh, just uh, as a takeaway, I thought like you should know what are the uh, energy efficient technologies. Let us see uh, mechanical. So mechanical nowadays you have got uh, earlier you had very big boilers. Today you have very small packaged boilers are there. So need based. Uh, like I think I can give a small example. You have got gas geyser at home. Uh, if you just compare with your boiler which was there at home earlier, which used to burn wood and all. So this is very compact and very energy efficient. As simple as that. Similarly, you have got furnaces which are very efficient and uh, good combustion technologies, proper insulation. Uh, then your air conditioners, DG, uh, diesel generating sets, they are all energy efficient. Now they have come with star rating. 
and uh, you have the new generation compressors earlier we had only reciprocating compressor but today you have screw type compressors which are very silent and energy efficient and uh, then the last thing is the uh, waste heat recovery basically energy any heat which is uh, going out like our automotive automobile exhaust in bikes but uh, today in cars uh, in the exhaust also we are running the turbo superchargers and uh, trying to get, uh, take out energy advantage from the exhaust also similarly industry also the waste heat is uh, sent at somewhere on 160 170 degrees centigrade below that we can't send it uh, out because the coal diesel and all they contain a element called sulfur and this sulfur produces sulfur dioxide so anything uh, below, below 150 and all if you can uh, extract the heat then the sulfur dioxide condenses and produces sulfuric acid and it corrodes the entire material hence we do not uh, this is one of the bottlenecks so that is why nowadays uh, we are going for sulfurless uh, fuels or low sulfur fuels and even your bharat stage 6 uh, diesel has got very ultra low sulfur with them and regarding electrical technologies we will see we have got something called vfds or variable frequency drives Uh, then we have something called power factor improvement and maximum demand controllers you have energy efficient motors which are more than 92% efficient now and uh, distribution transformers also what you see at sorry house oil field now they you have got that uh, dry type loss uh, transformers distribution transformers and energy efficient welding sets like you have latest is the inverter based uh, sets instead of the old heavy one transformer one which we have seen all along and illumination also i think now you know all the led lamps we are going for wind, uh, like transparent roofing and all to take advantage of natural sunlight so government of india has initiated a process called as be star label products so bureau of energy efficiency they have mandatorily uh, labeled lot of products so that the consumer has a choice he understands ki what are the energy efficiency of the like one star two to, star to five star so five star is the highest and one star is the least so you can uh, the consumer can choose uh, so the room air conditioners ceiling fans color televisions computers refrigerators distribution transformers gas stoves uh, frost free refrigerators industrial motors pumps uh, submersible pumps uh, so lot of things you have got star rating microwave uh, like uh, now room ac with the variable speed like inverter basis what you are seeing so your consumer has a informed choice about this so i just uh, i was going through the star rating plan uh, for i think you can just see the this star suppose this is for a chiller you can see right from 1 star to 5 star so 1 star has got a cop of uh, 4.8 whereas 5 star has got a cop of 6.6 so uh, these are latest uh, figures what i am having so uh, you have got a informed choice so like with it is for there for everybody yeah so as a auditor actually what you would like to ponder this is not a it's not a rocket science it's very simple common sense that's why i put the bulb in the beginning of my presentation it's a very simple common sense we all have that only we have to look specifically into that like uh, one is the equipment oversize i think you all know we we all have cars so in car we most of the people drive a single so it is like a, it's a very huge, huge vehicle 1000 kg vehicle transporting 100 kg person so it is like equipment over sir simple examples uh, then i give simple examples so that you can relate to them okay similarly is the case of boilers furnaces which consume energy so you need to have a proper size of uh, equipment so uh, instead of a big car you can go in bike also okay there is more fuel efficient less carbon footprint similarly operation at uh, full load uh, most of the equipments we operate at very uh, part load conditions uh, so that is also not advisable say suppose in a house you have a cooker a 5 kg cooker 6 kg cooker and you are cooking only for two people that is like you using part load you can better go for 3 uh, 3 liter cookers okay similarly star rating as i was telling b star rating products are there so it is advisable that uh, educated people those who are aware they should go for star rated uh, uh, product they are expensive in the beginning initial cost is high but the life cycle cost is low so you have to understand not only the initial cost but take care of the entire life cycle cost which involves the operation and maintenance cost then uh, nowadays this building management system softwares are there uh, to monitor the performance of buildings uh, high rise building what you call 
Then one more thing I think most of you may not be knowing is the time of day metering, TOD they call. So if basically I can give one example like in dairies where they process this milk, they use this TOD metering to their advantage. So in in the evening between 10, 11 to 5, they cool their water. They call it as ice bank tank. So that time if you use the power, the charges are almost 15 percent off less. So nowadays I think electricity is costing somewhere 7 to 8 rupees per unit. So they take advantage of this because why this time of day metering is done Mika? Because you know any industry again like uh, operating at full load. If the power plant is working at uh, part load then the efficiency part load efficiency will be less. That is why this uh, they are passing all the advantage to the consumers. Then you have renewable energy like solar, wind and all and weight heat uh, recovery technologies are there. That you should see where you can use. I give example of car turbochargers. And uh, similarly, uh, I can give an example like uh, in uh, all the power plants. If you say, you, we have studied, I think uh, we study energy engineering or power plant engineering. There you can see there is something called uh, air preheater, economizer. These are nothing but like waste heat recovery device. So air preheater heats the... Uh, air which is sent to the combustion and economizer heats the water which is being supplied to the, sent to the boiler. So we are recovering uh, heat from the glue gases to heat the air and water. Now one example for a DG set, uh, you just uh, see this DG set. Uh, this is a star labeling, how it uh, the label is put on the uh, equipment. This is a three star uh, rated product. Now if you just see here also, like for uh, as a mechanical engineer, I think you know about SFC, uh, specific fuel consumption. So you can see if a single star uh, rated DG set is there, it may consume around 300 to 336 grams of fuel per kilowatt hour, means per unit, 300 grams to 335 grams of fuel. But five, rate, uh, five star rated products, they consume less than 220 grams. Okay, so less than 220 grams means almost... Uh, for uh, per uh, liter uh, per kg of uh, diesel, it, they produce almost five, four to five units, whereas this it uh, produces only three units. So, uh, if, if for a layman or a thumb rule, uh, uh, per liter three uh, units of power and per liter five units of power makes big difference. The electricity uh, energy produced by DG sets cost somewhere around eighteen to twenty rupees in that case per unit. So this is small procedure what I have shown. I think you can go through this, how the DG sets are tested. Okay. Uh, and these are some devices like now I was telling uh, dry transformers, energy efficient motors, energy efficient pumps, uh, the compressors, screw compressors, furnaces and the packaged boiler. The bottom right side, the packaged boilers are there. So very nice technologies have come up over the years. Uh, in the field of uh, energy conservation, energy audit due to energy audits. If you take my own, uh, just uh, to uh, on a lighter side, my own uh, house application, what I have done, like I have a, a, a small 100cc bike uh, and a small petrol car and diesel car. I don't have any big SUV and all. So, and we travel also very need based uh, on a monthly basis, that too when the family is traveling. The uh, building house is painted white inside, outside. And all we have got all the lights are LED bulbs and tube lights. We use uh, B star label products and our LPG cooking stove. We are using LPG. Earlier days, people used to use kerosene, wood, and all. This is clean burning fuel. So, and you have different size of co pressure cookers if, uh, for cooking for two, cooking for four, as I was telling, three liters, five liters, eight liters. Cookers are available. And we use the LPG in a blue. The flame should be blue, that is why we clean that, we should not have a yellow flame, uh, that is taken care and we have like renewable energy solar water heater, uh, but we do have LPG geyser backup. Now just uh, one simple example I wanted to give, you, you take a cooker, pressure cooker works on technology, okay. So the one thing is if you are using a cooker you are saving uh, fuel there. Second thing, as per the needs of the family, you can have a small cooker, large cooker, based on the need you can change the cooker. Cooker is a one-time investment, say 1000, 1500 rupees, but it will, in the long run it saves you money. Second thing, you can see this cooking also. This open vessel cooking is not advisable. Uh, 
uh, you can see right side you got uh, open vessel cooking but the flame is blue so that means it shows a uh, burner is burning efficiently okay and uh, rather than that we should use technology like pressure cooker that that saves time as well as money and all my bulbs like i was telling this is shot in my house only so these are uh, small 9 watt bulbs uh, in the bedroom and uh, 20 watt 8 watt tube light led tube lights in the living rooms <coughs> just to take what is the audit just to appreciate that if you just take my own home we have four members in the family uh, uh, we almost spend 3000 rupees per head per month i'll just show what are the energy sources like you see one two three four are listed one is petrol and diesel used for cars where we spend almost 8000 rupees with the least travel huh? and electricity almost 1000 rupees per month lpg we use for cooking as well as sometimes water heating that cost 2000 rupees per month uh, petrol uh, is 1000 for uh, two wheelers so it is almost 12000 rupees per month uh, and 144000 rupees per annum and you can see the breakup now uh, this kind of study you do in industry so what are the different types of fuel what is the monthly expenditure what is the annual expenditure what is the share now you can see 66 percent is petrol diesel in cars and lpg is 18 percent so if i want to tackle first i'll tackle this big percentage 66 percentage then i'll try to tackle the 8 percentage sorry 18 percent then i'll go for the electricity and two wheelers i think this this gives this graph gives a uh, this uh, table gives a clear understanding key what is the specific energy consumption per head per person per month as well as what are the sh share of the various forms of energy and where you should tackle <coughs> just for a uh, simplicity sake i have sh shown this so that you will have a fair idea and the same thing is applied to industry also so industry uh, this energy audits are taken for all uh, undertaken for all industries whether the small big medium and uh, hotels the government of india has some designated consumers so uh, these uh, for them mandatory audits are there cold storage is uh, 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 then office building malls commercial building hospitals multi story residences then milk processing and all okay so what are the types of energy audit as i was telling so one is a small audit so two third three days that is walk through audit or prelim audit then we have a detailed energy audit where you study the process in detail and third one is like investment grade audit investment grade audit means when you suggest suppose you ask for some retrofit and it costs them five lakhs ten lakh rupees then you need to make a very uh, elaborate audit and uh, specify uh, specify it financially why justify it as to why that uh, uh, retrofit makes sense okay then the steps in uh, energy audits are you collect data you go to this field you study uh, then you an analyze the energy consumption and performance of energy accounting then you do analysis uh, and you finally prepare a report i think this mev training was covered to you nicely but just i wanted to share that this includes hvac design and drafting uh, hvac execution and maintenance so these are the different fields where young engineers can work either they can work for design and drafting of a, a hvac system or they can use for project implementation or for operation and maintenance so this is a 10 steps methodology for conducting energy audit like one is the plan step on plan and organize then walk through the audit and informal interview with the uh, stakeholders then uh, then int second is int uh, introductory meeting with the divisional heads step three you collect data prelim primary data and then you have flow diagrams for energy and process four you conduct the survey and monitor okay you may uh, then you conduct the detailed trials you measure it actually for a certain period of time let's say 24 hours and all okay then you have the an an you make the analysis of the energy use just uh, like i made for my own house uh, that small analysis you'll make then you will try to find out the opportunities of, for conserving energy and based on that you will make the cost benefit analysis uh, and you will report to the management and uh, afterwards there is a implementation phase okay so one uh, report uh, observation i just wanted to share this is a new mall in faridabad uh, where undertaken recently so you can see a lot of awareness is there people like the main salient points are the power factor they are maintaining almost unity that is very good then chillers are very efficient and pumps are also high uh, efficiency pumps and vfd has been introduced 
then lifts are also new technology lighting is good led lamps and their only suggestion what i saw that the old 36 watt tube lights with the electronic chokes they asked them to replace the with the led lights okay so when all the new technology things are used then there will be very little scope for further conservation now let us go look at the instruments used for uh, energy audits like mechanical now what are the parameters you measure like you measure the temperature heat flow radiation air flow liquid uh, flow uh, uh, rpm air velocity noise vibration dust tds uh, ph values moisture relative humidity combustion so for measuring these parameters you have got flue gas analyzer draft gauges ir thermometers anemometers flow meters uh, tds meters temperature indicators emission measurement and nowadays you have got multi tasking equipment which measures three four uh, quantities in a single equipment and uh, data logging facilities available pressure measurement humidity and measurement similarly like uh, uh, let us see what are the equipments we measure basically like ac refrigeration units boilers furnaces steam systems insulation uh, steam systems means in industry mostly steam is used for heating so the the entire thing with the steam pipelines are there steam traps are there is properly studied uh, this you don't study in uh, your academics basically then you have insulation also like heat transfer you study the insulation is there the industrial fans different types of fans um, um, high capacity fans basically then dg sets diesel generating sets for the standby backup power air compressors again this is utility refrigeration system weight waste heat recovery systems heat exchangers and lighting systems and electrical uh, instruments are also there they are, now they are mostly as seen lately they are having bluetooth and uh, on cloud they can send the data so remotely also you can measure that facility has come like uh, electrical uh, you have clamp meters pf meters power quality analyzers thermal cameras lux meter and hygrometer so lux meter is to measure the illumination level and the electrical equipments what we study are like transformers lighting systems hvac systems refrigeration systems motors pumps and automatic power factor controllers so i just uh, download some pictures for the observation like uh, electrically how this clamp meters uh, 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 for measuring various parameters like voltage current power factor ac active power reactive power uh, real power frequencies harmonics and uh, you have got energy smart energy meters also so uh, the, nowadays smart means which are net enabled net connected so that data can be shared you have combustion gas analyzer fuel efficiency monitors then manometers pitot tubes then contact and non-contact thermometers ultrasonic flow meters psychrometer this is for to measure the dry bulb temperature wet bulb temperature sling psychrometer ultrasonic flow meter is a non-contact flow meter for measuring the flow of fluids uh, you can see a very simple handle device it is tachometers are there again contact one and non-contact one which is known as stroboscope then lux meter for measuring uh, light intensity the white uh, this one is a sensor connected to the device and you have a thermography which measures the various temperatures and uh, this is a real life example like testo instruments uh, opportunity to see them so these figures are taken from testo website uh, you can see hvac they have got special instruments refrigeration they have got instruments so one more company is like fluke they are also into uh, they are all reputed uh, equipment manufacturers and some manufacturer list i have given like vika orion massibus testo chavison uh, proximon utec then uh, regarding detailed energy audit you need there are some steps i think we have already discussed but see one is the executive summary executive summary means uh, the management doesn't have the time that they listen to you for the entire day so they may give some half an hour or so and in that one or two pages you have to say what you want to do what are the opportunities of conserving energy and that gives the gist of your suggestions okay one or two pages only then you have got a detailed study like uh, the plant uh, layout description production cost major energy use areas production process described properly flow diagram you make the raw materials what the quantity cost then energy and utility systems utility means whatever like electricity steam compressed water compressed air water chilled water cooling water this is raw 
called termed as utilities then you will be studying all these utilities in detail then detail uh, process flow diagram energy and mass uh, balance water balance you will take then energy efficiency in utility systems and process systems like uh, for sec specific energy consumption i told the dj set gives somewhere 3 to 5 units of power electricity per liter of diesel similarly your bike 50 km 60 km deti hai so these are all specific energy consumption boiler efficiency furnace efficiency cooling water performance assessment dg set efficiency refrigeration system efficiency compressed air system electric motor efficiency lighting systems and all. and based on that you will have the energy conservation options the and you will list the options some options don't cost money so the low cost operations medium cost operations and high cost operation even the timeline also some can be implemented immediately some may take some, some months and some may take some years so that also is a, uh, has to be considered and you need to lastly give the what are the list of instruments used for the audit and who are the equipment suppliers suppose you say talk about vst takeaway suppose you talk about vfd okay then who are the suppliers of the equipment you are need to give a list so if you suggest any major so like uh, you can suggested one uh, major of waste heat recovery let us take then you have to make a table like this what is the equipment uh, what is the civil cost what is the instrumentation cost what is the auxiliary cost so this is the first investment then what are the annual operating cost this annual operating cost includes cost of capital maintenance manpower energy depreciation okay depreciation means when you buy something of next year its value reduces suppose i buy a bike for 60000 rupees so next year it will be a 50000 so this way the equipment depreciates third in is the annual savings so what is the savings in electrical energy thermal energy uh, waste or raw material saving so based on this when you make a smart table like this for each uh, uh, major energy conservation measure then you will say the net savings is equal to annual savings minus annual operating cost this uh, then you will find out the payback period so payback period is investment divided by the net savings per year into 12 so you can understand what in per in months how many months the money gets returned suppose i, I we ask to invest 5 lakhs or 10 lakhs so in how many years he will get the money back so if he the invest uh, the industrialist uh, proprietor he uh, gets the money back early say 3 years 5 years he is interested in investing if it is goes beyond that i think they don't show much interest in the investing for those energy conservation measures unless they are mandated by law like environmental act and all second thing that the the, the, the suggestions whatever you make i have shown you some technologies if you want to make some suggestions then you have to make a table like this so what are the energy saving recommendations you are making so what is the annual energy savings yeah, in terms of units then in terms of money what is the annual savings and what is the total investment you have to make and what is the payback period so normally the uh, uh, payback period should be the least short one 2 years 3 years then they are, they are prompted to invest then you have to again uh, prioritize this energy saving measure as i was telling one is uh, with no investment or immediately they can do some operational in, uh, improvements some housekeeping improvements then second is the low investment which can take some few months short term and medium term like you install some controls equipment modifications some process change you do and third one is a high investment the long term like energy efficient devices product modifications technology change and all so you have to make a table key what is the savings in terms of uh, units in terms of money and what is the priority just uh, as a mechanical engineer i think you will be interested you study the boilers uh, the boiler you can just i wanted to show one small picture uh, like what is the efficiency of boiler here boiler uh, right side you can see left side you can see fuel input and air is supplied then water is supplied and goes out as steam and he, the fl- blue is the flue gases which contains all this dry flue gases uh, hydrogen loss moisture in fuel then moisture in air carbon monoxide loss fly ash loss as well as the surface loss and bottom uh, ash loss as well as blow down so the efficiency of the boiler when you take uh, in detail study then you will study this all losses 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and that you will subtract from the 100 so this will the, give the uh, details uh, efficiency of the boiler in the indirect method 
Coming to refrigeration plants, I think this uh, refrigeration plants also we will discuss in detail tomorrow. You can see that uh, HVAC audit also, I think we will see that tomorrow only we will go through that. And just uh, we will see the vapor compression refrigeration system components like uh, uh, you have the evaporator, compressor, condenser and the throttle valve. This is a pH diagram. Uh, and just uh, we will see the centralized air conditioning for multi-story buildings. Uh, you see nowadays they have centralized air conditioning system. Just to have a fair idea, you can see the bottom you have got a chiller. In this uh, basement you will have a chiller ch uh, which contains the compressor, condenser and the evaporator. Okay. Now on the rooftop you will have cooling towers. So what uh, in, in, in normal air conditioning what we see directly in the evaporator air is cooled and sent to the room like you see in the split AC what you are having in house or ATMs, bank ATMs. But this uh, central AC they have the cooling water is circulated to all the floors actually chilled water. So water is chilled somewhere 8 to 10 degrees centigrade in the chiller and it is sent to all the floors and in the, all the floors you have got something called AHU air handling units they supply the air to all the rooms in the different floors and for a moment of this uh, cold or chilled water there is a pump and the condenser uh, water to heat, cool the condenser water you have got a pump and it supplies the pump to the rooftop cooling tower and the heat is dumped to the atmosphere i think we will see the photograph also uh, okay, next we will see the photograph now uh, just one slide uh, i wanted to show you there are different types of compressors like screw compressor multi scroll compressor high efficiency uh, screw compressor oil free centrifugal compressor so as an engineer if you do appreciate that the uh, full load uh, rating uh, is only same almost 6 uh, the er you are getting but part load you can see they change so part load efficiency oil for oil free centrifugal is far better if you are running it 40 percent 60 percent and now so based on these kind of graphs you have graphs for all like pumps also i think you might have studied characteristic curves of pumps uh, chillers so you will understand this and as an engineer you have to apply this uh, when you undertake the energy audits so as i was telling uh, you can see the left side circuit is the uh, chilled water and uh, the air handling unit that cold air is supplied to the inside extreme left and the extreme right is a cooling tower which supplies the uh, and dumps the heat into the atmospheric air to the right and then you have got this, uh, like evaporator and condenser in between these are the different loops and just uh, you can see the psychometric chart uh, uh, for two minutes i'll explain this psychometric chart developed by carrier this is for one atmospheric pressure you can see the x-axis you have got the dry bulb temperatures and uh, uh, y-axis you can see that uh, 0 to 35 that is a grams of water vapor per kg of dryer this is a specific humidity and the red the curved line is a uh, saturation line 100 percent saturation line you can see that at, uh, at 0 degrees or 5 degrees the maximum uh, amount of water that air can hold is only 5 grams whereas uh, if the temperature goes to 30 35 degrees centigrade at 35 degrees centigrade air can hold up to 35 grams of water per kg of dryer and the slant line you can say 20 to 100 110 whatever is written this is a uh, enthalpy lines, constant enthalpy lines and you have got wet bulb temperature lines, this green color lines. So this is a psychometric chart also which is used uh, uh, in this uh, audits and for uh, HVAC you have that compressor, chilled water uh, pumps, cooling tower, uh, uh, cooling tower fan and condenser pumps. So again if you look at uh, just uh, I think you are all aware that now due to COVID, the government has asked people to raise the temperature right of the ACS right from 25 to 30 degrees centigrade. Because you can see, uh, just see the column 1 and column 3. Column 1 is the evaporated temperature and column 3 is the specific power consumption. You can see as the, uh, from 5, you are lowering the temperature. When you lower the temperature of the evaporator, the specific power consumption increases. So this is not advantageous. So that is why now they are advising to increase the evaporator temperature so that the specific power consumption is reduced and also it takes care of this COVID sanitization business. And some of the energy conservation measures like I have visited Parleji factory in Hubli. They used to use electricity for heating that is baking of the biscuits. But today they have gone for uh, 
एल एन जी लिक्विफाइड नेचुरल गैस द वेरी क्लीन बर्निंग एंड दे आर सेविंग अराउंड थर्टी परसेंट ऑफ द कास्ट ऑल्सो सो फ्यूल सब्सटेशन कैन बी वन ऑफ द थिंग्स एज आई वॉज टेलिंग अर्लियर पीपल आर यूजिंग केरोसिन स्टोव और फायर वुड एंड टूडे दे आर यूजिंग एल पी जी फॉर कुकिंग दिस इज केस ऑफ फ्यूल सब्सटेशन दैन सेकेंड इज एनरी जनरेशन ऑल्सो आई थिंक यू आर ऑल अवेयर लॉट ऑफ शुगर इंडस्ट्रीज इन महाराष्ट्र सो दिस शुगर इंडस्ट्रीज अर्ली वेर दे आर ओनली जनरेटिंग प्रोड्यूसिंग शुगर बट टूडे दे हैव गॉन इन टू पावर जनरेशन ऑल्सो को जनरेशन सम ट्वेंटी मेगा वैट थर्टी मेगा वैट ईच शुगर इंडस्ट्री हेज गॉट ए को जनरेशन प्लांट सो बेस द बगास दे बर्न टू जनरेट स्टीम एंड दे रन ए स्टीम पावर प्लांट also they are now into distillery uh, distillery also they ma- manufacture ethanol which is used for uh, human consumption as well as uh, blending with the uh, fuel what we use the petrol almost has 5% of uh, uh, ethanol and that is why it is called as gasohol gasoline plus alcohol then you should study the energy distribution and energy usage by the process so based on these studies you need to make the technical studies and economical feasibility or uh, study because it i told uh, economical they should be viable you can't have long payback periods okay they should have very short payback periods second thing with the technology what is suggesting about either they have the space uh, whether manpower is available and then you should also study the imp- uh, safety basically as we are talking about energy audits there are something called safety audits and environment audits also but mostly people are doing them for name sake that is why uh, it's con- uh, cause of concern globally and what are the if you suggest any new technology whether it's a reliable what are the service issues maintenance requirements and availability of space this this all need to be studied so one technology i just wanted to say because most of your mechanical engineers in electrical engineering the new device called like you have got inverter ac now i think you have got inverter ac then inverter lifts are available okay similarly these these are like vfd variable frequency drives please just see the two, uh, two lines one is the red line and the blue line the red line is the real curve and the blue line is when you install the vft at 100% rating this is basically used for motor high capacity motor at 100 uh, the motor can be used for a pump it can be used for a compressor it can be used for a lift various applications at 100% loading the per- uh, efficiency is okay but when uh, uh, the capacity reduces instead of 100% suppose you are running at 60% you can see the real car power requirement is very high 80% whereas if you use a vfd you can run it with 60% of power so you are almost saying 20% of the power so this of great uh, uh, help like i can give one example in lift so suppose lift is designed for 500 kg then only 1% is traveling so in this case this these are helpful in conserving the energy So lastly i wanted to talk about this uh, national certification exam for certified energy managers and energy auditors i think you are aware it's conducted annually by ambedkar institute of productivity aip national productivity council and there are guidebooks available online please download them free guidebooks are there uh, very uh, useful guide uh, guidebooks both from electrical point of view and the mechanical point of view really it will make your learning meaningful uh, there are four papers and the fees of 10000 rupees uh, for the examination and the winning passing percentage is 50% and the fourth paper is a open book exam but that doesn't help you need to have your fundamentals very strong for energy managers anybody like post graduate in science with 5 years experience diploma holder mechanical engineering with 6 year experience or bm tech person can become but for energy auditor you need to be a graduate engineer with 3 years of experience or a post graduate engineer with 2 years of experience so there are four books what i was telling one one so the first book refers to the general aspects of energy management and energy audit so pdf copies are available second is the th- uh, energy efficiency in the thermal utilities third is energy efficiency of electrical utilities and the last book is energy performance assessment of equipment and utility systems so the syllabus also is given here like uh, Uh, energy scenario first book it is general aspects of energy management and energy audit energy scenario energy conservation act which was implemented in 2001 i think now it is being updated revised and the basics of energy energy management and audit energy and mass balance energy action planning financial management energy efficiency and climate change new and renewable energy sources and second for mechanical engineers this second book will be very interesting like 
we study fuels and combustion boilers steam system furnaces insulation uh, fbc that is fluidized bed combustion boilers that is the new generation boilers then co generation waste heat recovery and heat technology for electrical engineers i think you study about electrical motors compressed air system hvac and refrigeration system fans and blowers pumps and uh, pumping systems uh, cooling towers lighting systems uh, diesel and natural gas powered generators and uh, of late there is something called ecbc energy conservation building codes okay this is also part of this energy conservation by be and the last book uh, where you study the performance assessment of equipment and utility systems you study the performance of boilers furnaces co generation systems heat exchangers electrical motors and variable speed drives fans and blowers pumps compressors hvac system and fi the financial analysis so i am a certified energy manager as well as auditor so they give you a certificate like this which is valid for i think 5 10 years and every 5 years you need to undergo a training see bottom i think in the red they are written Uh, last uh, last year 2018 i have undergone training so they give the certificate issued by ministry of power and they also issue a cert identity card like certified energy manager they are given so my number was ea8061 this is identity card given to the certificate uh, certified energy manager so uh, whatever uh, lastly i would like to say whatever recommendations you make basically they should be based, based on some financial uh, tool which you use like return on investment or internal rate of return or net present value technique or discounted cash flow technique this uh, techniques you study in the your economics actually manager economics when you study uh, i think in second or third year of engineering so you should also classify them as low cost uh, investments medium cost and high cost investments so the most of the references material i have taken from bureau of energy efficiency ministry of power government of india website i also taken from iip npc uh, that are guide books and uh, pcra and the equipment manufacturers so at the end i would like to thank you and uh, you can have a great day this is my email mane.suresh1304 at gmail.com uh, any queries are there you can ask me now or you can post the queries i will try to answer whenever it's convenient for me thank you and have a great day